Welcome to the Sales Wolves Podcast. I am Tyler Harris. And this is Joseph Caldwell. And we are the, the Sales original. Wolves. <laughs> the original. Arr! Arr! All right. <laughs> Let's get on with this, man. This is the second episode, episode two of the Sales Wolves Podcast. So we did want to start off real quick and just give you a quick run through, two, three minutes on what this is all about. All right, so what we want to accomplish with this with this Sales Wolves podcast is really twofold. The first is to show appreciation for what we feel like is the most valuable profession in the world, and that's the salesperson. The second reason, and our and our second task is to provide tactical, real world something that you can put into application today to increase your sales, and and not just increase your sales, but um, Really, since we believe that everybody's in sales, you can use this no matter what your profession is. If you don't think you're in sales, then that's the number one hurdle you have to get over because we believe everybody is in sales. Mm -hmm. If you're a stay-at-home mama, you're in sales, right? Somebody's got to sell that kid on eating that broccoli, mm -hmm. right? Um, if you are a lawyer, a doctor, an engineer, you have to use you have to use sales every day to get your job done effectively. Right. Absolutely. And so, uh, and so, our our goal is to provide for free. Um, we're never going to ask anybody to buy a system from us to try to. It's just not what we're doing. We're here to we're here to provide this to people. Um, and why why should you listen? Why should they listen to us, Tyler? Uh, well, number one, we know what we're talking about. Um, and we know what we're talking about because we've done it, uh, we've had success, but we've also had massive failures. So we can come from both angles and tell you, hey, here's what we were doing when we were failing. Right. And then here's what we were doing when we were succeeding. And then to take that to the next level, here's what we're doing currently. We're currently selling. Right. Um, so you know, with us, everything's about current credibility. Uh, what are you doing currently? Uh, that's what you should be speaking on. That's what you should be teaching on. There's enough people that are out there teaching on stuff that they did 20 years ago, or maybe never ever actually did at and all. Never. How many business coaches do you see that's <laughs> never built a damn business? Uh, plenty of them. How, how many sales people want coaches? To, sales they, coaches they don't know how to sell. They can't sell anything. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, if if you're a sales coach and 99% of your income comes from sales coaching, not selling. <laughs> You might be a. You might be something. <laughs> something. That's not like a bad. I think it's a redneck. <laughs> anyway. So we're gonna dive right into today's topic, which is fill my funnel. Fill your what? <laughs> you want me to do what? Fill, not feel. <laughs> you feel? Feel what? Fill. All right. Fill my funnel. So when you were in college, back in the fifties. That's funny. Hilarious. <laughs> Did you ever used to funnel beers on occasion? I, that can be neither confirmed nor denied. It probably happened. It, um, <laughs> not that I remember. <laughs> so I was I was thinking about this topic today and about and about prospecting and, and your pipeline yep. and things like that. And, and I started to think about that scene from the movie Old School. Oh yeah, that's um, hilarious with Will Ferrell. With Will Ferrell, we that's choose, one of the funniest. We things choose ever. our analogies from the most classic. You know, the, just yeah. your 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 top quality movies. You're you're gone with the wind. <laughs> yeah. Your Billy Madison. Yeah. Your Shawshank. And then Shaw old school. Old school. Right. <laughs> so on old school, when he's walking, th when Will Ferrell is walking through the party, and the guys are you know filling up the funnel, and they're funneling beers, and, and they look at him like, hey man, come on, why don't you funnel a beer? And he's like, no, 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 I got, I got, yeah, I can't, I gotta go, I gotta go. My wife, you know, I gotta get home to her, and and then all of a sudden he says. Okay, all right, we'll, just, we'll do just one. one. We'll, we'll do just one. one. They're like, all right, all right. And so they fill it up, and he takes it, and then the first thing he says, when it hits your lips, he was like, so oh, it feels so good. <laughs> fill it up again. Fill it up again. And so that's, <laughs> so that's, really, that's really what we wanted to be able to ultimately get out of this conversation on prospecting is it is something sales, and especially the prospecting side, to me is highly emotional. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of ups and downs and riding waves of momentum. And what we wanted this particular podcast today and this, and this topic of prospecting to do is, is just that. We wanted to, to, to grab you and yep. take you back to where you should have been yep. and then get you excited to where you want to keep it, yep. keep filling it up over and over and over. And, and you know the problem that I see with prospecting and the way people feel about it is they they see it they see the phone calls they see the the cold calls they see the walking in a door um, they see the emails they see that as a necessary evil mm -hmm. right 
And that's a problem. If you see the, the 100 phone calls you should be making in a day, the 200 phone calls you should be making in a day, the 25 to 50 doors you should be walking through in a day, if you see that as a necessary evil, I'm telling you, you're, you're destined for failure. You really are. Mm -hmm. it, and, and, and the whole, the whole thing with this is, is, is ignite your fire to fall in love with that. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you, when I started, uh, I, was selling with a, I was selling with a large payroll company. And, and, and I literally hated the phone. Mm -hmm. I, I hated it and I refused to do it. It weighed a hundred pounds. A thousand. Yeah. Um, and I felt like I woke up with it sitting on my chest, right? I, I hated when I thought I had to, to, to make those phone calls. And then when I, when I had the thought of, of walking in doors of businesses and, and, and cold calling, oh my God, terrified, right? And the only thing that got me over that was falling passionately in love with doing it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember I had a manager one time that at the end of the week, I always did well because I had some charisma and I would get people to refer me business and, and I worked the channels that were comfortable, sure. right? But I never did those phone calls or those cold calls. And I had a manager that brought me in his office one day. He had just started. He brought, you playing footsie with me under here? I felt that, it was yeah, a little awkward. That was awkward. <laughs> I, you're now glistening a little bit more. <laughs> That's, okay. um, he, he brought me in the office on a Friday and he said, hey, so tell me about, you had a good week, you sold this. I was like, yeah, yeah. And he asked me, he said, he said so, so show me where you did your 100 phone calls and you, did, you walked in 25 places a day. And I went, what? I, didn't, I mean, I, I, I got the results, man. I didn't need to do that, right? And he goes, no, 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 that was, that's part of your job is, what, is, is doing that right now. And I was scared. I was like, no, nah, but did you see how many I sold? You know, I was, because uh, my sure. charisma results. would always get me out of that. I was just showing him the results. I was going, hey, I sold this many. I'm good. And, uh, and he said, no, I told you that this is what was required every day. And, uh, and he said, I got to be honest with you. This is your one mulligan. Hmm. I had never played golf at the time. I didn't know that that was my one do-over. I thought I was like, my God, he's going to give me a disease or something. But, but, uh, but so I had one do-over and he said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. He said, are you scared of the phone? And I was like, scared? I ain't scared of nothing. So another man asked me if I was scared. Mm -hmm. You don't want to admit that. He's scared to walk in the door someplace. He wasn't taunting me. He was asking. I said, I ain't scared of nothing. He said, great. So Monday morning, I'll be here at seven. You be here at seven. We'll do 30 minutes of emailing and get all of our stuff in order. And then you and I are going to hit the road. <laughs> and I went, oh my God, I couldn't breathe the whole weekend. I bet. Whole weekend, man, I was terrified. But what happened was we went in and we started making those. I think he, I think we, we started cold calling first, drove to my territory, started cold calling, cold called till about mid afternoon. And then we made phone calls until my fingers about bled. <laughs> And it was miserable. He stayed with me all that week and we did it time and time again. And what happened was I not only overcame my fear, I saw the results. I saw that I could do that and I could conquer doing that. And, and not only that, but I was winning. I wasn't having to finagle some type of system and fluff my numbers mm -hmm. to make it look like I did this or that. And, and, and it wasn't near as stressful as I thought it was going to be Absolutely. because I got result after result after result after result. And man, I will always be thankful to that manager. He's one of my favorite people on this earth. That was 15, 15, 20 years ago, in between 15 and 20 years ago, wow. probably 15 years ago. And I'll never forget him. I still talk to him to this day and he was only my manager for six months. Hmm. Isn't that wild, man, that I remember that? so Because he led by example. He led, led, led by example. Phone. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because he would pick up the phone, call, get an appointment, <laughs> set it down and go, your turn, and boom, we went back and forth. And we That's would awesome. walk through the door of a place, he would call on them, and then I would have to do it. And then we would talk about what I did right, what I did wrong, how what he liked, what he didn't like, and then we'd do that with his. <laughs> You know, just as you're saying that, as a, as a side note, and then we're going to jump right into the, the tips from this topic, but, you know, there's a lot of people that aren't fortunate enough to have that. Uh, sure. And that's really ultimately what we want this to be. Right. Uh, we want this to be a place where we can push you and we can challenge you and we can show you leading by example right. uh, and be that for some people. Because let's be honest, a lot of sales managers are just old, tired salespeople that, that, uh, yeah. that, that are... That are that are grateful that they are no longer doing what got them to where they are. Exactly. Uh, and have no, and have no, um, 
they, they can never remember what it was like. Don't remember. Uh, back in the field. No less will say, hey, jump in the car, let's go do it. That's, which is awesome. So we want to jump right into the uh, prospect, prospecting tips to fill your funnel. Uh, the first is you have to make sure that you have in your calendar set in stone either a daily, depending on your business and your industry, it'll be different, but either a daily and or weekly time blocks for prospecting yep. and, and just it's set in stone. You just got to stick to it. Yeah. You have to pretend like that is your, that's the holy grail of meetings. Mm -hmm. If you and I set up with our industry and insurance, if it was a whale of a client we were going to see, right? Mm -hmm. If it was a whale, would we be late? No. Would we be early? Probably. Probably. Would we miss it for any reason? <laughs> no. No. Come hell or high water, you won't be at that appointment. That's mm -hmm. how you got to treat prospects. Yeah. Absolutely. And you have to, it becomes routine. And, and so that's what we want to talk about here is that the, the processes and the systems that you develop around prospecting are ultimately what's going to tie you to it. And, and to me, it's, it's almost, you know, gamification is like a big word these days. It, it's almost like creating, creating like a content, creating, oh. creating it to where it can become fun. Something that's not oh, yeah, fun yeah, yeah, yeah. can become fun because you make a game out of it. Absolutely. You know, you're, you're either competitive with someone or you're, that's what I've done with this built in with rewards. You. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who's winning. <laughs> But you gotta, you gotta. I've had to gamify this miserable <laughs> experience. <laughs> so the second tip, and this one, honestly, this one was so huge for me about two years ago, and I can remember even the conversation uh, that I had with one of our uh, business partners. Um, it's you have to sometimes slow down to True. speed up. True. In our business, this is critical because. Sometimes the worst thing that can happen to you as far as in your sales career is to have a period of time uh, where you have done exceptionally well, where you have had exceptional results. Sometimes you gotta put the, pump the brakes on the transactional aspect of closing the sale to go back and refill that funnel yep. and, and to get the next three months, your next quarter yep. um, lined up for you or all of a sudden that last sale Will, will conclude and all of a sudden you look in your funnel and you look in your pipeline and you're like, oh my gosh, I have nothing. nothing. And you're, then you're, you're, it changes your entire it, mentality. It, it, like this. It, change, it, it changes your entire ment mentality to where now when you're going to those meetings that you have to close them. Right. I've got to get this one. I've got to, uh, and to they get feel this meeting it. They the feel that. Always feel it. They always feel it. Yep. Uh, the next tip is you've got to utilize a CRM. Now, you know, which kind of CRM, that doesn't matter. You've just got to use one. Yeah, you're not going to hear us plug different things. Yeah. I mean, we, don't, we don't give a crap. Just use one. And, and be as detailed as humanly possible with that is so important. You know, I, I see so many people that they're, they're making the calls but they're not making the adequate notes on the calls. Yeah. And then when they get done with their calls for the day, when the next day comes and they got to do the follow-up, it's impossible to remember everything. You feel like, oh, I'm going to remember, you know, that call with that guy, but you won't. So take impeccable notes. I have a mentor of mine that, um, he was telling me something one day and something I needed to do. And I was like, got it. And he goes, what do you mean you got it? I said, I got it. I'm gonna make that happen. He goes, <laughs> A short pencil is better than a long memory every time, right? Absolutely. Wear a pen out, wear a pencil out, right? Make that happen. And so part of, part of the, the process of, of using that CRM is evaluating and, and mining the data, figuring out how many calls is it taking me to set a meeting? How many meetings is it taking me to finally close the sale? And so you ultimately, you'll figure out what your sales cycle looks like, yep. and then you can start tracking that. You know, is my, has my sales cycle increased, decreased, and you can start adjusting things based on, well, it's taking me more calls. I should yeah. probably work on my call. Or it's taking right. me more meetings, or the different things that will come in that. And then I think probably the most important aspect of, of the CRM and, and keeping good notes is being real. Like what, yep. what, what does your pipeline really look like? God, people because, lie to themselves, don't they? Well, it starts off by lying to their boss. Yeah. But if you lie to your boss enough, you will start believing the lies and it creates this false sense of security that yeah, you're okay. 
You got, yeah. you got some stuff. You, you got some stuff in the books that you're working on. You got some stuff. Uh, you got some stuff lined up that this should yeah. be popping any second. Yeah. When in the reality is it's complete fluff yeah. that really has no chance of closing. Right. Uh, that is super dangerous. A super dangerous position to put yourself in. Big time. Uh, and then lastly, if you just want to touch on because you you have ingrained this in me is the the now and the later the the now money mm -hmm. and, and the later money and if you want to go through that yeah i mean prospecting is is what irons that out right so you got your now money like in in, in the insurance business where we work um you, you have the you have the the sales you're going on today that you're going to close and that's now money right mm -hmm. But you can never forget the whole reason why this funnel is so important and the whole reason it is a funnel, right? Because there's people that are coming in the top of that um, funnel, the middle of that funnel, the bottom of that funnel, and popping out the end as a sale, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why it gets, goes like this. And so you have your now money and later money and you have to be focused on, and a good friend of mine actually calls that now and later money mm -hmm. down, in, and down in Texas. His name is Jimmy Sewell, but he, uh, he, he uh, talks about that all the time where you have to constantly, if I'm, if I'm closing deals today, I don't rest on the laurels of those successes, period. You can't rest on those laurels. You have to constantly be thinking about tomorrow money, mm -hmm. today money, tomorrow money, now and later money. Right, and so you're you're constantly making that new sales call. Right, we have a thing where walk, you know, make a hundred phone calls a day, walk through twenty five businesses. Right, if you're if you're selling to businesses, a uh, business to business, you know it can vary in whatever you're doing. If you're all over the phone, then you can make three hundred phone calls a day. If you're if you're all you know face to face, then you can walk through the door of 60, 70 businesses in a day. Sure. Right. So, so that's how that works, but you've got to, you've got to always concentrate on not just the now money, because what most people do is they think, well, I've got, I've got 10 appointments a day. I'm going to crush it. I'm going to make some money and they don't take the time and they don't have it blocked in their schedule. Like you said, mm -hmm. to make the tomorrow money calls. And then when tomorrow money, it's not there. They go to mine that field and they're, they never planted anything. Mm -hmm. Right. So anyway, that's. That's just how they see it, or that's how I see it. I'm talking about us in third person. <laughs> <laughs> it's that's, how, started. that's how those two sales wolves guys see it. <laughs> so guys, I mean, that's that's it. That's that's really ultimately what we wanted to get out of this podcast is for to give you that that little push to get excited about prospecting again because <laughs> so <good on> <laughs> when it lips. hits your lips, because <laughs> because the reality is. You need to be more focused on keeping your funnel filled than you need to be on closing the sale. Because if your funnel is full enough, the sales will happen. It'll happen. So with that, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, guys, that is episode two. Dose. The Sales Wolves podcast. Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. We are the Sales Wolves. And if you enjoy this. Ah, we should probably plug this a little bit. A little bit. If you're enjoying these podcasts, which I'm sure all of you are, <laughs> share it up on Facebook. We're you. posting these po uh, podcasts on Facebook on Friday. We record them on Friday, so it's always going to be one week lag to get them on Facebook. But please share them up. Uh, so we say it's free what we're what we're putting out there, but that would be the only way that that you can show us uh, a little bit of absolutely uh, of return appreciate on us. our investment in time. Absolutely. Uh, so with that, guys, we are the Sales Wolves. Bye. Bye.